Look at the progress we've made. The illnesses we've conquered. The lives we've extended. The qualities of life that we've altered. Even the eating had my days 40 years ago, only old ladies and sneakers used to eat health food. Yeah. Now you can find it in every supermarket. Well, you go to the Upper West Side where I live, yeah. every other restaurant is like macrobiotic, all natural. It took all a while. Vegan. It took a while, but people came to the conclusion then eventually that they want to have quality of life and meaning. So you think our society physically. is advancing and nicely? Our purpose now is to fill this space with God consciousness. And not by preaching, but by example, and the way we act on the subway. And, and the way we, we, we extend ourselves and go beyond our comfort zone. And even when we rub the wrong way, we don't need jerk and respond. Right. We catch ourselves. Being observant does not mean being religious. It yeah. means you got to look what's going on. Right. And don't become part of the problem. Right. Become Be part, part of the, the solution. solution. Yeah. And that's a, a proactive, positive approach, which is only inspiring you as you see the result then you'll, you'll see the, the feedback that you're getting from the people by being nice to them, that you will tend to be more proactively nice to other people. You know, I do feel I'm, I'm, I'm a nicer person. Yeah. I do feel that I don't get annoyed nearly as much. I don't get as angry. And I'm, I'm much more patient with my children and more considerate of other people. And, you know, people say, have you changed? And, I, you know, it's a subtle thing. And change takes time. But I do feel that I have had those positive, you know, those positive changes. It has to be that way because what you're doing is you're changing your inside. You're not changing your design of clothes right. or your haircut. You're changing your character traits. My haircut? What? Well, changing yeah. my beard. Yeah, well, beard. you know, let it hang out. <laughs> Baal Shem Tov would say like this. He said, if you see a negative quality in another person, God doesn't need you to judge them. Right. But so why is he be showing you this? He's showing you this to realize that what you're, being, what you're being shown is yourself. You know, it's just hard sometimes when you see that people judge and they're being petty. It's very hard not, you know, to withhold your, withhold your it, tongue it, and not say you're being no, petty, you're no, being judgmental. No, no, no don't, don't say that. I know. No, don't, don't, I know, but it's hard, isn't you it? Don't want, you don't want to be... You don't want to say that. You don't want to say that. You can say, you know, we have to say just to switch the subject Diffuse the situation, take some air out of the tires, right. don't feed the fire. Right. So if you, again, if you see something you don't like, remember one thing, what you're being shown is things inside of you. Yeah. So rather than attacking the person or dealing with the person, find that quality in yourself and you can fix it. Once you fix it, the way it says in Rab Nachman, the way, the way you look at that person, that's how he becomes. If you see him as a thief, he'll be a thief. So in Europe, when children who just used to misbehave, do things below themselves, the parents didn't say, oh, you're no good, you'll never become anything. They yeah. would say, it's not befitting. Right. A kid like you with your brains, yeah. this is not, this is not you. Right. The kids, so now all of a sudden the kids start thinking of positive aspects. Right, they right. say, oh, that's terrible, you're terrible. Right, right. So again, you have to emphasize again, bring out in the reality. And, and you also have to, if you are going to criticize your children, you criticize their action. You don't criticize right, their right, essence. Right, right, You say right. when you do that, it whatever. It doesn't bring out the best in you. Right. You're you better than that. Right. That's that's what that accentuate the positive means. Yeah. No, it's it's good. It's you excellent. Don't, you don't pour salt on the wound. No, it's excellent. Even though it's a very good uh, anti antibacterial agent, <laughs> but there are other ones that don't burn you. Right. So the, the way to change things is is by not. Uh, giving into what they expect you that will only make them continue in the same way that the, that you don't like. Right. The changing of the subject is an interesting strategy, where you kind of like veer it away slowly. Right, right, right. But you got to be conscious to do that. You have to be conscious to do anything. Yeah, that's what it's all about. That's what about. That's what 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 what, what observing means. You got to look at the situation. God, look. God made our face. He put the brain on top, then he put the eyes, the ears, the nose, and then the mouth. Why do he make it like that? It must be the reason. The reason is basically you have a brain. Yeah. Do I have a brain? No, no, of course you have a brain. <laughs> yeah. Think. Yeah. Think. Yeah. Okay, now you've thought about it. You want to say something? Look at the situation with your eyes. Yeah. And see if this is the right situation, the right time to say, the right place to say it. He hearing means 
let's hear how this would sound to the other person if you said it this way, or if you said it this way. Find a way of, of letting the person hear it in a way that it could be acceptable. The nose is, in, is intuition. Like right. people say, I smell something fishy here. That's right. intuition. <laughs> Finally, when you get to the mouth, yeah. we went through the process. We thought, we looked, we listened, we intuited. Yeah. You start to talk. In the middle of talking, you realize, wait a second, it's not going to the right place. Bite your tongue. Right. That's, your te- that's, that's your teeth. Right. Your t- teeth bite your tongue. Yeah. If it gets past that and you're still on the wrong track, yeah. shut your mouth. <laughs> this is the structure of the face. And that's how it all plays out. And that's how, if you, if you download it properly, you'll be able to email it and GPS it, whatever you want to do with it. But if you skip the steps in between the thinking and then you're talking without looking, you'll be saying things you shouldn't say. Right. And at, t- at times, maybe you should say them, but not in this place, right. with well, someone else sitting there over there, or and someone's it. listening to you. You also have to say it in a way that people exactly. can Exactly, choose can your you. words. Right. Someone so, told me that there's a midrash or something in Kabbalah that when you're born, you're given a certain amount of words for your entire life. Yeah. And once you go over, that kind of means your time is over, so use your words very carefully and use them sparingly and use them correctly and... Yeah, selectively. Selectively? Yeah, yeah, because so certain words, words are two syllables, are three syllables. If sometimes you can say the same thing in less words. <laughs> so basically what it's trying to tell you is not that you shouldn't take it literally. Yeah. It means choose your words for, for its effectiveness because this will determine the length and quality of your life. Would you say that God consciousness means living every moment that you have to the best ability, your best ability that you can? Uh, to is be- God consciousness living every moment the best way possible for you as an individual? I would say that the awareness of that possibility and the effort to achieve that is what we're, we have control over. Right. To, to, to effectively be able to do it takes a continuous ongoing unfolding process like it does for bodybuilding or losing weight or, or going on a diet. Right. Not because you read the book and then all of a sudden it becomes this. You have to constantly realize that there is a goal. There are steps to be taken to achieve that goal. And there are a lot of potholes and, and trip-ups. But you're still going to continue because there is a goal. And God Conscious also is seeing everything in the big picture. Yes, there's, there's, there's a whole... Otherwise, it's not God Consciousness. There's a whole plan. And we're part of the plan. Okay. And we have a purpose in that yeah, plan. Right. And you have to see that. And everybody has a purpose. And when exactly. Bad, exactly. When something bad happens, that's part of the purpose. That's right. And but it's you, a challenge. And the fact that you don't understand it, that's also part of the purpose. Right. Right. It's that, everything's part of the purpose. And because of, just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that what's happening isn't, isn't what needs to happen. Well, that's what I was saying before. When you get confused, what do you do with that being confused? You realize that like you're a, confused and start to, to put things in order so you don't use confusion as an as a excuse to, to become incapacitated. Right. Some people pull stuff up so they can have an excuse to now act irrationally. So how do you use confusion as, as the right motivation? Use everything. Anger, whatever it may be. Whatever you confront that's not constructive should be a wake-up call for a proactive, constructive effort. Yeah. I guess that's the bottom line. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not about uh, completion. It's about process.